In this episode of Voice of the Sea, we explore Hanama Bay, one of the most unique marine protected areas in the world. We talk to experts from Hawaii Sea Grant who run the Hanama Bay Education Program and to researchers from the University of Hawaii who are working to understand the ecology of the bay and how it is impacted by visitors. We'll also talk about how the coronavirus pandemic is providing Hanama Bay with an unanticipated period of rest and the plan for continuing research, education, and volunteer programs. I was happy to start off talking with my friend and marine educator, Annie Rosa. Aloha everyone, I'm very happy to be talking with you as well, Kanisa, and bringing the bay to everyone's uh, living rooms. I am an educator at Hanawa Bay. So with the Hanawa Bay Education Program, one of the things that we teach about is the place itself. And it's interesting to be here removed from the place, but still with the people that are connected to the place. Hanawa Bay is a conservation area. It's a bay that was formed about 30 to 40,000 years ago through volcanic action. So eruptions coming up from underneath the seafloor and forming Hanawa Bay. And geologists think that at some point, the bay was a complete circle crater. And at some point, it actually was able to erode and have the one seaside fall in and form that crescent shape of the bay. One of the meanings of Hanoma is the curved bay or the crescent shaped bay, Hanoma. It is a place that is a conservation area. So we have an opportunity when we do go to Hanoma Bay is to see more marine life and more diverse marine life than we might see in other surrounding areas because it's protected and nobody's taking anything out. So I was uh, born and raised in Mauna Lua Bay, which if you look right up the mountain, you see Hanawa Bay as the, as the backdrop, which is Coco Head. And my family is from that area. My dad grew up fishing there and my grandfather was actually one the fishery for the Bishop of State. So he was the last uh, konohiki, so the konohiki in the Hawaiian style, which is to watch the watch the fishery resources in the Mauna Lua Bay and also extending into the up the wall, as our paddlers would know, around to, to Hanawa Bay. If you come into Hanawa Bay as a local Hawaii resident, you make sure you bring your ID so you can get the fee waived. Otherwise, if you're a non-resident, you bring your $7.50 and pay admission. You get a ticket and you get to come into our education center, learn about the bay. You get to see a educational video that tells you the conservation rules as well as ocean safety information. And that is your way that you get down to the bay. So without seeing that information in the video, then you wouldn't be able to pass down into the bay. So both education as well as regulating the amounts of people is why that educational video is there. So only 500 people an hour would be passing through that, that educational video process. And that limits the amount of people going down at any one time with the goal of having less than 2,000 on the beach at any one time. And for you being in this long generational line of caretakers of Hanama Bay, how does that make you feel? Uh, I feel really grateful to still be carrying on in the capacity of education at Hanama Bay. You know, it's 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 modified over the years. So, you know, my, my grandpa was a was a fisherman and caretaker and, and my dad as well, uh, waterman and, and caretaker of the surrounding waters. So I feel grateful to, to be an educator and pass a good message on to the next generation. And as we're in this time right now of the coronavirus where we're all social distancing, you and I are having this conversation online rather than in person and the Bay itself is shut down for visitors now for about a week and a half. Um, can you speak to maybe what you think might happen to the bay itself as people aren't going in the water or on the shore there? Yeah, so I guess in this in this time, it's a time to reflect on things. Definitely, 
And one of the words that, that comes up is kapu. Kapu meaning not only restricted, but of significance uh, of the law, even sacred um, and of importance. So it, it's, a, it's a rest time um, that we've been that we've been taken into um, in order to, you know, protect ourselves and everybody. And hopefully it's a, it's a positive rest time for the Bay. Hanoma is, is the place and the marine life, but Hanoma is also the people. So we definitely send our aloha and uh, concern to, you know, all of the folks that work alongside us at Hanoma Bay. Our team ranges from community volunteers to education park staff, city park staff. We have vendors, you know, like snorkel, tram, uh, gift shop, snack shop. We have security guards. So we definitely send our aloha to to all those folks as um, they are a part of Hanawa Bay. Hopefully everybody is uh, getting along okay throughout the closure. Mahalo, Annie. Is there anything else that you would like to share with our visitors that we didn't touch upon? Just wanted to uh, thank you for spending the time with us and we look forward to seeing you, connecting with you either online or in person at Hanoma Bay. So mahalo and ahui ho. Ahui ho. Aloha Gavin. Hi. Thank you so much for joining me today remotely. And the first thing that I want to talk about is your role at Hanama Bay. I am the outreach program coordinator for the Hanama Bay Education Program. My responsibility is providing a weekly lecture series that features researchers from various institutions in the marine field sharing their research. So each month we have different types of themes covering Hawaiian monk seals to coral reef conservation. And I also um, bought with a lot of the school groups that come to the Bay trying to learn about marine conservation. Due to the COVID-19, unfortunately, we are not doing it in person anymore uh, for the time being. At this point, I'm trying to utilize uh, resources such as Zoom to pre-record our research researchers' presentations um, just to kind of still offer them the opportunity to learn about what they are researching, at the same time abiding by the social distancing and stay-at-home mandate. That way, we still continue to offer education to our community. The lecture series uh, gets offered every Thursday night, free to the public, 6.30 to 8, when it is open, when the bay is open. How long have you worked at Hanama Bay? I have been at Hanama Bay for approximately 15 years. I started out as an education assistant worked there for a couple of years and then I was offered the stewardship coordinator position and just recently last year I actually was promoted to the outreach program coordinator. Ever since I was young I actually love the marine environment. I love fishing but then yet I want to conserve the environment so um, it offered a great opportunity for me especially because it's so near a lot of beaches which I like to go to I also do a lot of underwater photography and take a lot of pictures, which our education program utilizes for our various education resources. It gives me a both opportunity to do both at the same time. So it's a great place to work. So if I come to Hanama Bay and I'm in the education center and I'm checking out the kiosks, yeah. you actually took almost all the photos of the different kinds of fish I'm going to see. Mm -hmm. Especially on the kiosks, I've taken most of the videos that are shown. So we usually update them maybe every two or three months so that it keeps it kind of up to date. It's a great place to come snorkel because there's a lot of marine life there, um, which you do not find elsewhere in a lot of the areas that are not conservation areas. A lot of the fish are fished out. And at Hanama, I think you see the most fish versus other areas of the island just because it is a conservation area. University of Hawaii Sea Grant College program focused on Hawaii's coasts and its communities through sustainable development, safe seafood supply, sustainable coastal tourism, hazard resilience, and healthy coastal ecosystems. Hawaii Sea Grant.
Welcome back. We're talking with legendary coral reef researcher, Ku'ule Rogers, to learn about her work at Hanama Bay. I started at the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology at the Coral Reef Ecology Lab in 1992, which is 28 years ago. It's been a while, and during that time, I have conducted over 100 different projects. So we do work on local impacts, global impacts. In 1969, Paul Joe Keel started the Coral Reef Ecology Lab. And by the time I got there, we were some of the first to look at changes in ocean chemistry due to ocean acidification. We look at local impacts as well, such as sediments and nutrients and overfishing, uh, human impacts, and just about anything else you can think. We have a very diverse lab. We not only conduct manipulative experiments, we also conduct field experiments and field monitoring. We were the first to set up a long-term monitoring program for the state of Hawaii since 1998, uh, over 20 years now. And uh, we have sites throughout the entire state and we partner with the Division of Aquatic Resources so that this research and this monitoring will be ongoing so we can know what the changes in the reefs are. We work with a variety of communities, helping them set up monitoring programs, doing outreach so that they can understand what some of the issues are. We moved away from pure science and we're still doing some of that, but we're also looking at solutions, things that we can do to actually make a change, a positive change for our coral reefs. But right now, because of this shutdown of Hanauma Bay and all the city parks because of the COVID-19 virus, we are finding this is the perfect opportunity for us to take a look at what is happening if you were to close the bay. How long will it take for improvement to be seen? And what types of improvement will we see in corals? We're looking and at, in fish, we're looking at a variety of different types of projects while the bay is closed. One of them is fish behavior because fish modify their behavior if there are too many people around and we wanna see how much they've been modifying their behavior. We're also looking at recruitment of corals to see if corals are recruiting on the flat areas of the reef because right now, in the heavily used areas, most of the corals are found on vertical surfaces and they're in cracks and walls and places that people cannot access. And we wanna see if these horizontal areas would be able to come back if they didn't have the constant visitor impacts. You're a researcher at the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology in Kaneohe, which is where you do your laboratory work, um, and other aspects of your research. Can you tell me how that's been impacted by uh, COVID-19? Well, all of the university now uh, has, many of us are working from home. We're fortunate at Mokuolo'e or at HIMB, we're able to take our work home. So we still can continue our Hanama Bay project, but we also have a lot of other work we can do from home with computers. We've taken home microscopes and settlement tiles so that we can continue our work there. Some things we can't do that we'll have to wait, but many of the things we're actually catching up on and doing pretty well. Is there anything that you would like to share about your work at Hanama Bay or about the type of work that you do in general? One thing I'd like to share is that the biggest threat to Hanama Bay, as well as to the rest of the world of our coral reefs, is the impact of temperature rise. The bleaching events have already killed off over half of our reefs. But the good news is that we can do something about it. If we all work together, we're at a crossroads right now. And what we do today is going to determine what's going to happen in the future to our reefs. But we have that great opportunity 
to tell the future generation that we were part of the solution to actually save the reefs. And we all have to do that by getting on board to reduce our carbon. Think about every purchase you make. How long are you keeping it? What was it made for? What are you gonna do when you dispose of it? And eat lower on the food chain. The lower you eat, the more fruits and vegetables, it's better for you, it's better for the coral reefs, it's better for everyone in the world. These things are very important and they're simple things that all of us can do. We are looking for a few heroes, mentors, trailblazers, innovators, a passion to change lives, spark curiosity, open hearts and awaken minds, help students answer the question, who am I? This could be your calling, but this is no job. It's the journey of a lifetime. Be a hero, be a teacher. Welcome back. I'm talking with scientist Sarah Severino to learn more about the techniques researchers are using to study Hanama Bay. Can you talk to me about some of the tools that you use to look at water clarity or count the number of fish or coral cover? Yeah, so we actually have eight permanent transects laid out on the inner reef plot there. So transects are just a fancy way of saying a plot of substrate. And we have five meter by 15 meter plots of substrate there that we monitor throughout the entire inner reef flat. And we go by and we count all the corals, we measure their diameter, we check on their health condition. So that was really important this last fall when we had our bleaching event. So we were looking at their health, how are they doing? Another thing that we do is we go along these transects and we count the fish. And then we're also taking historical data for the fish and visitor counts and trying to see if there are any changes with the fish over time. So were there changes in the population abundance or biomass when they stopped fish feeding or when they started reducing their numbers? Because back in the late 80s, it was 3 million people. Now we have around 800,000. So we do see this reduction. Are we seeing changes in fish populations because of that? Another thing that we'll likely be doing in this month is something called a fish behavior study. And these typically are used when you're trying to look to see if a fish population is, has been pressured from fishing. We're going to be using it for looking from pressure from snorkelers or just visitor presence. What you do is you swim along a transect or a straight line and you film in front of you and you're looking at these fish and you're filming them you bring that back to the lab and what you do is you count the distance between you and the fish before it turns away or before it speeds up in its swimming pattern and then you also look at its behavior as it's swimming away is it going to hide is it just swimming in an opposite direction is it not bothered at all so we're going to be doing those studies while it's closed during this month and then also when it's open the next month. One of the ways that we measure water clarity is by using what's called a Secchi disk. This is a big round disk that you typically you look at the water clarity vertically throughout the water column. And because Hanauma is so shallow, we actually use this horizontally across the reef flat. So one partner would hold the disc here while the other partner would swim away with a measuring tape and they would record when they couldn't see that white disc anymore. They'd record that number, they'd swim away further, then they'd start swimming back to the disc and record when they could see it again. And you take the average of those numbers and that gives you your average water clarity as far as the Secchi disc method goes. And we did this on open and closed days and we found that the water clarity was 30% clearer on closed days. Next, Morgan Mamizuka tells us how she started working at Hanama Bay and how you can get involved. When I first started at Hanama Bay, 
I was actually a summer intern. I was just a student. They let me stay on after my internship was done and I'd worked as an education assistant. I had really no formal training in volunteer management uh, when I first started at Hanama Bay, but working with um, the staff and all the volunteers, it kind of became something that I really cared about. All these different people coming together at Hanama Bay because they care about that place and they want to have a hand in protecting it so that other people can come and enjoy and see really what's special and unique about the place. We really work hard to try and get our residents to come out to Hanawa Bay because we want them to feel like this is their place to take ownership of Hanawa Bay and to be proud of a place like Hanawa Bay. Our natural resources need to be protected so that it can be like Hanawa Bay is, not just here in Hawaii, but elsewhere to use it as kind of a model for people to take home with them. We always, you know, try to think of a loftier goal that when they come to Hanama Bay, they're going to hear us tell them to protect this place so that it's here for other people to come back and enjoy. But we really want them to take that notion with them elsewhere, you know, to other beaches in Hawaii or other beaches back home where they're from so that they can start to do the same thing where they're thinking, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be taking this coral out of the water. Maybe I shouldn't take too much fish um, when I go fishing. So that's really our message to not just our visitors, but our residents to do what we have here in Hanawa Bay to try and do that elsewhere. You're getting your master's right now in online learning and communicating. Is there anything you've learned from your studies that apply now during this time of COVID-19 where we're having to practice social distancing? You're not able to go be with your volunteers at the Bay. Yeah, my master's program is the Learning Design and Technology program at University of Hoya Manoa. And I've been in a cohort where everything is online. So I haven't been in a class on campus at all for the last four years now. So that's something I definitely am thankful for that I've been working (laughs) the last four years. And I'm like, okay, this is my last semester and we're going to put it all to use now. (laughs) Do you have any messages or ideas that you'd like to share? My message would be to, you know, if, If there's something you want to do, learn more about, like go out and find out if you can volunteer to help out. There's always a need for volunteers, uh, not just at Hanawa Bay, but a lot of places um, around Hawaii, especially in a time um, like we're going through right now with COVID-19. Even little things to help out your community, places where you're from. Yeah, I'm an advocate for volunteering. Hanama Bay is a special place to visit and see marine life. You can learn more about the bay online and be sure to check out the Thursday night lecture series. Sign up to be a volunteer today. Watch more episodes and find additional content online at voiceofthesea.org. Follow us on social media at Voice of the Sea TV. Mahalo for watching Voice of the Sea. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is the dynamic curriculum developed by the University of Hawaii's Curriculum Research and Development Group. The award-winning Fluid Earth and Living Ocean textbooks are now interactive and online. New activities, updated content, and a teacher community. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is now freely available. Find out more at exploringourfluidearth.org.